Hey guys, Basil Mo from Grayson Hobby, and no, your eyes are not deceiving you. I'm holding a Spectrum radio. Wait, Why? I thought that was the new Tyrannus radio. Yeah. Is this not a new Tyrannus radio? <laughs> ah, I'm completely screwed up here. Why am uh, I holding the Spectrum radio, Will? Okay, so <laughs> Spectrum, the last video we did, we kind of knocked on, or I personally knocked on Her, uh, Horizon Hobby Spectrum for not releasing anything micro at this point in time ever. for their quads. Not just recently, ever. Yeah, there's no reason for that. Aftermarket companies have re uh, made receivers. Well, guess what? Literally the day we posted the video, uh, Horizon happened to drop something on their website with no information really, no other than a Facebook post, nothing out there. Uh, it's right. called a SPM 4650 receiver. Um, what does this do? We have to watch the whole thing to find out. So Yeah, watch the video and find out. Uh, is this a saving grace for Spectrum or are they too late and we're beating a dead horse? If you're new to the channel, Grace and Hobby is a shop located outside of Atlanta, Georgia, where we sell and ship out quads and airplanes and drone parts and everything of sorts. And everything you see on our website is located here in our good old USA warehouse right outside of Atlanta. All right. All right guys, so you might have seen on our last video that we're talking about how Spectrum has zero micro receivers. Literally- Five the, volt, full range. Yeah, I mean, everything Spectrum has was huge and uh, you know, there's no diversity in the big stuff. This was needed to be decased to be smaller. This thing was just too long. Um, both of which are just eh. So literally the day we did the video on that, and well actually the day we posted it, um, Horizon secretly announced something without putting anything really on their website or anything or any kind of other than a Facebook post. So this is the new SPM 4650 DSMX serial Serial Racing Receiver Version 2. It's their new micro receiver that does telemetry communication. It's got bi-directional, um, kind of like S-Port for FreeSky. And, but more importantly... Small, and it runs anywhere from 3.3 3 right. volts to 8.4 volts. Right. So, it'll actually work with newer flight controllers like Diatones that have abandoned the 3.3 3 volt pack. It weighs like 1.4 grams or something like that. Without shrink tube on it, but with the connector, let's see what we got weight-wise. 1.7, so I guess Barry will be 1.4 okay. um, without the housing on it. So, show us how it comes. So, okay. what you get out of the box here, you get this fancy little plastic casing that's completely useless that'll find its way in the trash can. Piece of clear shrink tube, which is nice. Free Sky doesn't include that. You get a cable that's pretty much useless because it's not silicone wire. You're not going to want to use that down the road. You're going to get the four pin ha header housing. So in order to make this as small as possible, as thin as possible, they decided to not pre-solder this like they did on the other receiver. Now keep in mind, this pin out is not the same as the 4648 and the 4649. That is one thing they do uh, stress in the what little manual they have. The receiver does feature a bind button on the back side. It can be software bound very easily through the uh, software and I'll show you that later. The solder pads are kind of small for a new solder. You may run into trouble there. Make sure you use some flux and um, a good soldering iron to get that soldered up. Got really easy to change antennas. So if you know the antenna does get cut okay. off or anything like that, nice. it's a nice heavy duty connector. One thing Spectrum's done a really good job on. They're not flimsy like the free sky. So if you cut your antenna, you definitely can replace it. Yeah, yeah, they're not soldered on. So they're, they're easy not glued to replace. on either. So. Yeah, and the price point of this receiver i think it was under 30 dollars. i think it was like 28 or something like that so um size wise how does that compare to its competitor well compared to the rxsr it's a little wider definitely about what is it eighth of an inch wider maybe oh so it is bigger than the rxxr yeah and then if you compare it without the header which it would be a hair longer but with the header pin it's about the same height um if you put the header pin on this one though yeah, it's gonna make it bigger. Okay. So keep in mind guys when you do solder this up, if you solder this pin on this way, um. that's not gonna match up. So realistically, and if you want to solder, which I would think that would be the best way because all the bulk would be on one side and then have it, you know, facing down. Yeah. But they actually the way they got the pin out done with, with the out. factory cable is designed to go on the bind button so side. you have to do the bind button to opposite you side don't have to but just know that you'd have to change the pin out. right so okay. i mean not a big deal match color to color but so you don't you know accidentally reverse polarity or anything like that you want to make sure you pay attention to the label on the receiver older versions in order to get serial communication you had to have four wires uh, on this particular one it is three wires now to be able to work. I got this is a Mamba Mark II stack, uh, F405 Mark II. Uh, this one does not support the 3.3 .3 volt is why I used it. And you can see here, this is the chart here, but in order to get the sucker to wire up, just like a traditional spectrum, we had to use UART6, which is on the back. So you got your ground, your five volt pad, not 3.3, because there is none on this board, five volt pad, and then 
because we're using a, a bi-directional communication on this one, like a smart port, you are wiring it to TX6. Normally, if you're soldering up a Spectrum receiver, that'd be RX6. So this is TX6. This is TX6. So the fourth wire says no connection on the flight con uh, on the receiver. If you look at the version one manual, the original release manual that came with this packaging, they actually already updated the manual. This thing has been out at the time of this production of the video. It's been out less than 12 days, I think is what the And that's the already picture. updated. Yeah, this is already, this is, uh, I would definitely say as far as the manuals go, take this, throw it in the trash can, go on their website, look at the cur most current manual. Moving on from that, we are gonna have some information I'm gonna put on the on the product page itself because there's a, a GitHub page, which a lot of the Betaflight stuff is on. Um, there's a custom firmware you have to install on this because this doesn't run older Betaflight because it's a new uh, protocol for them. And I know everybody's gonna be jumping just like FreeSky with the access pro protocol. This is 4.0.3. Now it's a custom fork of that firmware right now because it hasn't gone into the next release for Betaflight. Mm -hmm. So in order to do it, you're gonna have to download your uh, flight controller uh, hex file, install, do a local install, flash it, and then uh, do a CLI command, which you just copy paste, put it in there, and it'll enable the serial communication. I did try to run this as a traditional DSMX receiver, um, like I would wire up a 4648 or 469. Uh, it did not work. So I'm thinking this flight controller only wires up in um, the SRXL V2. Right. So I thought this was gonna be backwards compatible with DSMX. If you're new to Betaflight and this is um, kind of confusing for you, don't do it. Don't do it yeah, yet until yeah. there's more stuff out yeah. there for it. Uh, this is for the guys that are hardcore spectrums, like the last 10 people still out there. Just kidding, just kidding. But if you, you know, if you love your spectrum radios, like your DX9s, DX8s, et cetera. And 12s. Um, nah, nah, nah. This is the micro receiver that's gonna fit in the diatone and stuff like that without being too much of a hassle yeah. because the other receivers were just too big. So basically, the only thing I found on this receiver was from Miguel Alvarez. He posted on RC groups about the receiver there, product page, and a Betaflight, um, a GitHub page about the Serial RX and all that. From there, I found information about the Serial RXR. So I had to do some digging here because the main, the actual Horizons website, Spectrum's website, didn't have crap. From here, I found the 4.03, which actually has all the firmware, and we'll link this on the website until they finish updating everything for those of you that want to jump into this. But his there's all the hex files there, so you'll download whichever one you want. Like in this case, I'm using the Fury F4 OSD. So I'm gonna go to Fury F4 OSD. I'm gonna save target as, um, right there, save link as, and then I'll be able to install it from there. Okay. And then after you've done that, after you've flashed it, here is what I was talking about. This required CLI settings. I tried to just go through manual settings like I was setting up normally. It did not work, uh, mainly because there's a couple different features here that you have to do. So all you're going to do when you get, after you flash it, copy all that, paste it all in CLI, hit enter, hit sa uh, type save, and it's good to go as far as the receiver setup. So those are like spectrum specific CLI This commands. is specific settings for this one. I don't okay. know if it'll be easier down the road. I don't know if uh, the next time, next version that fully releases will be you just click it and it automatically puts that information in. Gotcha. I'm not sure. I'm hoping that's what it is because that's what they did in the past. Okay. Um, and then the other thing is if you want to do software binding, you just literally copy and paste that command there. So like I'll, I'm gonna go ahead and power this up real quick and show you guys that. Okay. So let's get this receiver plugged in. Now I did solder the header pin on this one. Just for our demo stream. Yeah, but you can literally solder three wires. You don't have to do this. You can do three wires, hard wire to that. If you got a you know quad build that you're not gonna be taking the receiver off or anything like that. Um, you need that low profile. So we're gonna do that. Let me get a battery plugged in. We got a bound flight controller or receiver. And I'm gonna go to beta flight here and you'll see the commands. We're gonna go CLI and take a look at this real quick. This is in solid. Now this receiver is already bound, but you can see here. Now I'm gonna go back to Betaflight and I'm just gonna paste that command that it told me to do, the serial RXL V2 bind. Hit enter and it's gonna say sending enter bind mode request. Now go back to the flight or the receiver and see it's flashing. Mm -hmm. There we go there. Um, now- So that's in bind mode now. Yes, and on my radio, I did- This is a new DX. Eight or whatever it is. This is a DX9, DX9, but the menus is going to be the same. I did go to frame rate and manually select 11 milliseconds. Um, it didn't, but the first time it bound in. It bound in 22, the which first time. there's no point on that. Yeah. So I'm going to go to bind, and I'm going to 
keep it about a foot away. So, and it has telemetry. Bind complete. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I don't know if any sensors are going to pop up, but if you have telemetry, you might as well try. Let's go to auto config and see if anything pops up. Oh, you have to power cycle. I'm sorry. So let's see if anything pops up from here. I don't see, I mean, it's got RSI in the top corner, but that was there before anything. Um, nothing here is coming up, so that might be something that's uh, settable in the beta fly. I'm not really sure yet. Um, so yeah, none of this is popping up. Nothing there, so this is very unimpressive so far. Oh, what's this here? Hold on. This might be fun. So this is just like... Does say beta flight? Yeah. Because I'm connected to the computer, I bet you that's the problem. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug from the computer. I'm going to power cycle this just for the sake of power cycling. Okay. We're going to exit here. So let's get into telemetry. I got, I got telemetry back. So do you need to auto configure again to make sure we have uh, else or no? Well, no. I'm going to give myself... Ooh, here we go. Okay. So guys, this is basically the same screen that you would have if you go into your OSD, like on your goggles. Um, but you can do this straight through the radio, which is kind of cool. Is that like what Lewis scripts were and everything? Yeah, it's essentially this is what the trans one had. So they, you know, Spectrum a little behind uh, as always, but. Um, but this doesn't require any, any updates to the radio though. Well, the radio does have to have the updated yeah. firmware to support it, yes. Okay. But this is, I think this firmware has been out about a year because yeah. I haven't updated this radio in yeah, a while. Yeah, it's been, okay. Um, but that's cool though, so you can get all your um, beta flight and PID settings, looks like. Yeah, right? so if you're line of sight tuning anything like that, you can go into there, you can change your profiles right there on the radio. Um, actually, probably the best thing right there is though, features, smart audio. Now, if you had smart audio enabled, which I don't believe is enabled, but you could change, you could set your video channel right there on the radio to force it to that channel if you have smart audio. Okay. Uh, so if you're having problems getting your goggles to and all that, that's just one little feature there. Um, so so it looks nice. like they're making some progress. They're making yeah, they are, some progress. They are, and I did check, and it actually did change the settings. It did save and reboot, so it actually does work. So that's that's actually pretty cool. That little thing does work. All right. So we had a receiver from Longbow, which has been very popular in the micros. Yeah, but you know, it's one of those things I never recommend on a five-inch quad yeah. because of the single antenna. This is essentially the same size, and it has a bind button on it. So yeah, it's you know almost triple the price, but this is a full-range receiver. Uh, well, the longbow is like ten bucks, and this guy's like thirty-five or twenty. Uh, or something. twenty-eight, something like that. Yeah. yeah, but this one has dual antennas, diversity, oh, yeah. two-way communication, for, like, your tiny micros, hawks and you know, indoor indoor guys. Yeah, so that, but that's pretty cool. That the size is about the same footprint, so that means it goes in places where the longbow did, which is a lot of the micro diatones that we were having trouble with the other receivers before. Finally, a good step up for Spectrum. Um, I kind of wish that the firmware was just a instant everything works on normal stuff but you know i understand their new protocol in order to do this um so guys just remember if you're getting into this you are going to have to update the firmware you're going to probably have to start from fresh with your pids and all that so there's not really a uh copy paste and all that for a lot of these quads because a lot of quads out there on the market right now are not running 4.0 or newer but let's face um, it, anybody who's running spectrum is a uh, pioneer or and they're probably used to this stuff. We're gonna put a link on the product page for those of you that to find the information. So hopefully that'll help you guys instead of having to dig through a bunch of stuff that's not really out there easily available yet. And hopefully you guys that are still running Spectrum, that's the answer we were all looking for because I know I was kind of griping about it last week and really ragging on Spectrum for it. And I'll give them props for releasing it. It's about a year and a half too late. Hey, without run on success.